and welcome back. This is the last video before the first exam in this course. We're going to be looking at shocks through the real business cycle model. Um, just as a sort of brief uh, catch up of where we were, we learned how to first derive the aggregate supply curve via looking at equilibrium in the labor markets, what level of production that leads to, and then boom, a vertical aggregate supply curve <coughs> that's independent of prices. Therefore, vertical. Then we learned how to derive the aggregate demand curve via intersections of the IS and LM curves, giving us a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Where these two meet, we have an equilibrium price level of P star at an output of Y star. Now, this is essentially a static representation of the dynamic general equilibrium model that we have been looking at with the real business cycle model and the money and the utility function model. Now, if you remember when I set the money and the utility function model up, I didn't have labor markets in it, therefore I went through another quick lecture on the real business cycle model that had labor markets in it, and this is what we get. So, let's start looking at shocks. There's going to be a couple of shocks that we're gonna look at here. Uh, four shocks total that we'll be watching learning about. You'll be watching and learning, I'll be doing. And so we will get started with the first shock of an aggregate supply shock coming from technology. I'll say AS shock coming from technological innovation. <clears throat> so what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is this production function here is going to experience technological change, an increase in technology, A. So AT increases. When AT increases, this curve here shifts. Now, I had a pretty drastic shift because I didn't want to draw over this. So, when there's a production, or sorry, a technology shock that's positive, production is going to shift up. Let's say firms need more labor here. For producing more, <clears throat> then firms need more labor. So labor demand is going to shift up. Why? Well, because firms need more labor. So we trace this dotted line up to this point here on the labor supply curve, meaning labor demand shifts out or up to the right, whatever you prefer, as long as it goes in this direction, like this is going like in a northeast direction. When that happens, because firms need more labor, and we're shifting labor demand along a stationary labor supply, the real wage rate is going to increase. I'll say under a labor demand shock,
labor and real wages both increase. Now we're producing at a new level of output Y star, which means aggregate supply shifts out. <clears throat> so aggregate supply shifts to the right. So I'll say Y star increases to Y prime. Aggregate supply shifts to the right. Now if aggregate supply shifts to the right, aggregate demand's not moving here. <clears throat> right? This is a supply side shock. This is not a demand side shock. Therefore, there will be no changes to aggregate demand. So the price level falls from P star to P prime. But we have this equilibrium point here. We've got to draw this dotted line up, right? Well, it gives us either it gives us a point right here along that IS curve. Well, there's no equilibrium up here, right? IS and LM are not equal to each other. That's not good. What happens? How does this get rectified? How do we fix this? Well, Let's look at what the LM curve is a function of. It's a function of the price level and money. Right? <clears throat> so if it's a function of the price level and money, then the price level falls. In the previous lecture, go through your notes really quickly, and think about what happens when the price level falls, what happens to the LM curve? Think about what happens. Well, if the price level drops, what direction is the LM curve going to shift? It's correct. It's going to shift to the right. shifts to the right up to the point where the IS and LM curves intersect directly above where aggregate demand and aggregate supply intersect. And this right here is the response to a technology shock that results in a shift in aggregate supply. So let's summarize what variables changed here. Let's summarize what moved. All right. This is where we're going to be using this static graph for under, like an idea, not so much as what the magnitudes of the shifts are. We're not so concerned about the quantitative responses. We're concerned about the qualitative responses. Right? What direction do these things change in? Well, first thing we're going to do, the source of the shock is going to show up first. 
right? And then we look at what happens. Well, output goes up. They need more labor, so labor goes up, right? That was that labor demand shift. Because there's a shift in labor demand, the wage rate goes up. Over here, okay, what happens? Well, the price level falls. So P drops. Okay, we covered everything. I've covered labor, I've covered output, I've covered wages, covered prices. Oh, 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 one more thing. What else falls? Well, let's take a look. That LM curve shifts to the right along a downward sloping IS curve. What that implies is that the real interest rate is going to fall from R star to R prime. We have that. So these right here, box it in, are the qualitative responses, right, just the direction changes of the endogenous variables in response to a shift in AT, which is an exogenous variable. So this is exogenous, the rest, these guys are endogenous. So this is what this model predicts we would see in an aggregate supply shock. Now, I'm going to suggest you work through this on your own as much as you can. All right, formulate the graph like I had it earlier, right, prior to all these shocks. I'll draw it out again in just a minute, and you can take a look, see what it is, and we can go from there. But my suggestion to you is formulate this just the basic general equilibrium setup and then try to impose this shock follow this video as many times as you have to but eventually try to start doing it on your own don't watch the video just try to work through it on your own and see how far you can get into it see how far you can make it before you got to go back, refer to your notes, see what's going on again. And just keep doing it until it becomes second nature. And then we should be good to go. And that will be the regular aggregate supply shock. This is what you should expect to see in the macro economy in response to an AS shock. And that will wrap up an aggregate supply shock. The next shock that's going to be presented is a labor supply shock. It'll generate more or less similar-ish predictions, except there will be one major difference, and that's the direction that the wage rate goes in. So while I said this is going to be one video, it's actually going to be four videos, each video covering a different shock of some sort. The next video is going to be a labor supply shock, which will result in an aggregate supply shift. It will result in a reduction in the price level. But that labor supply curve is shifting, and that's the only thing as far as the determinants of aggregate supply that's going to be moving, the production curve isn't going to shift. Therefore, the aggregate supply curve is not going to shift as much. And we'll see why in the next video. So until then, enjoy.